With a news update on 99.7-1450 WHTC, I'm Gary Stevens. The finalists for the official image of the 2025 Tulip Time Festival are now set. Officials of Holland's annual signature event announced yesterday that 20 works from 19 artists were chosen by juror Michael Burmeister, the owner of Button Gallery in Douglas. From 93 submissions by 54 creators, Alyssa Volbeda has two entries among the finalists, while past winners Kate Moynihan and Carolyn Stitch are also among those vying for the first Bloom honor. The winner will be chosen by Tulip Times leaders and announced in February, with the other 19 finalists put into the Viewer's Choice competition, in which the public can determine its favorite during the 96th renewal of the festival from May 3rd through the 11th. An online link to see all 20 finalist images is in this story at whtc.com. The benefits of having municipal power along the lakeshore and elsewhere is spotlighted during this Public Power Week. This evening from 5 to 7 p.m., the public is invited to a free open house at the Holland Energy Park with a theme of energy vampires that can lead to increased costs. There will be yard games, scavenger hunts, a lantern-lit three-quarter mile accessible trail, and dinner and snacks for all who attend. Holland BPW General Manager Dave Coster. Public power generally has lower rates because we're not-for-profit entities. Every dollar that you're spending goes back into the service that's being provided to you. Uh, additionally, um, higher reliability generally, and, and you know, our outages uh, are very uh, infrequent, and when they are, we're getting the power restored very quickly compared to you know, the investor-owned utilities and some of the, the private entities that are out there. We can prioritize you know, our response you know, to this community, and I think that makes a, you know, makes a big difference in things as well. And the third big differentiator, I think, is the voice that you have you know, in your community and the priorities of your utility. You, uh, the investor-owned utilities are regulated by a public service commission, and that's housed in Lansing, Michigan. You have to go over there and, and make a case along with a lot of other people as to you know, concerns that you have or, you know, rate cases. You know, here, you know, we have an independent board that uh, oversees the utility, but they are also still accountable and responsible to our city council, who ultimately determines our budget and sets our rates. And uh, that local control, I think, is a real important thing. Space is limited, and registration through an online link in this story at whtc.com is encouraged. A customer appreciation day is tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the BPW's offices off of Hastings Avenue. The Zeeland BPW has a similar open house in its facility off of Washington Avenue today from 4 to 7 p.m. Allegan County Government will show off some changes at its newly renovated county services building today, but not all of the kinks have been worked out yet. From 4 to 6 p.m. at the facility off of 122nd Avenue, across from Dumont Lake, north of Allegan, residents and other stakeholders are encouraged to participate in self-guided tours, although the open house is being conducted with the backdrop of ongoing litigation lasting more than 18 months at this point. County Treasurer Sally Brooks, County Clerk Bob Chinetsky, and County Drain Commissioner Denise Miedemar filed a lawsuit asking that their offices not be moved out of the courthouse complex in downtown Allegan, citing state law. That argument doesn't hold water, according to County Board Chairman Jim Story, a Holland Republican. We're asking these offices to move into a better location for serving our residents at a cost that is far more uh, Allegan County-wise than maybe some of our adjoining counties. We're doing this remodeling the courthouse for the new circuit court judge and updating the vacant space in the county services building for these offices, clerk, treasurer, drain commissioner, register of deeds. We're doing so for a total cost of $10.5 million. Not only do I reject the argument by some that we have violated the Constitution and state law, I would argue we are correcting an oversight by moving those offices into the county seat, which is it hasn't been changed by the only people who can change it, and that is the voters of Allegan County. We're moving it into Allegan Township, the county seat. Sonetsky, who dropped out of the lawsuit for financial reasons, says that snafus have ensued ever since his Register of Deeds office was moved to Dumont Lake. One poor gentleman drove uh, to the Register of Deeds office to record a deed. There's not a notary up there at that building, uh, county admin, so he had, had to drive down to um, 113 Chestnut to get his uh, document notarized, then drove back up and found out that he needed to get tax clearance, which is down at the treasurer's office. Uh, so he, he had to make three or four trips, uh, you know, 
I feel bad for him. Uh, there's another individual who was told by somebody at the courthouse that they needed to drive out to Dumont Lake to get his concealed pistol license. So uh, the move uh, probably wasn't as well publicized as the county could have done, and a lot of our customers are being inconvenienced. It's very unfortunate. Kalamazoo County Circuit Court Judge Curtis Bell will hear arguments on the litigation on Monday. School is off today at Grand Haven High School due to a burst pipe. The Career Line Tech Center is remaining open. Grand Haven Area Public Schools officials say transportation be provided for those Career Line Tech students. Former gymnastics and dance coach Shannon Guy will spend at least the next five decades in prison. He was convicted of sexually assaulting at least 14 girls in Grand Rapids. He will be 101 years old when he can file for parole. Guy was arrested in May of 2023 when a woman came forward. Others did follow. The former location of the Charlie's Crab Restaurant in downtown Grand Rapids has been approved for redevelopment by the city's downtown development authority. There will be three towers built on the site near the intersection of Fulton and Market, one being an office tower, another a hotel, and the third being residential. The office building will have 420,000 square feet of office space and a parking garage. Hotel tower will have 130 rooms. And the residential building are for nearly 600 apartments and 76 condominiums. Construction of the $800 million project would start next fall if the Grand Rapids City Commission, as well as the Michigan Strategic Fund Board, give their approval. The City of Portage will plant 400 trees in the next couple of years to replace those that were lost in the EF2 tornado that blasted the Kalamazoo suburb in May. Most of the trees will be planted at the historic Celery Flats Park. Others be elsewhere in the city's park system. People can help plant trees at the city's first Leaf A Legacy event that will be held on October 27th. The football field at Western Michigan University's Waldo Stadium will now be known as Stafford Smith Field. The new name follows a $5 million gift given to WMU by David Stafford, Rhonda Stafford, and their family. David Stafford played for Western from 86 to 88. It was one of the most rewarding experiences of his life. The university will recognize the family and celebrate the gift at homecoming on October 26th against uh, Kent State. Golden Flashes. Former President Donald Trump is scheduled to speak at the Detroit Economic Club this afternoon at an event in the Motor City Casino Hotel. Meanwhile, Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Tim Walz will campaign tomorrow at an undisclosed location in Macomb County. The start of a federal trial over the Flint water crisis has been delayed to October 29th. Jury selection was scheduled to begin this week. No reason for the delay has been revealed. Case has been in process for several years. Attorneys for seven Flint children say Viola, North America, and other companies contribute to, prolonged, and made the man-made emergency worse. But while Viola, one of the world's largest utility companies, denies those claims, saying that the Buick City, as well as the state of Michigan, caused the issues. Detroit Tiger fans are ecstatic with the 3-0 playoff win yesterday over the visiting Cleveland Guardians. 11-year-old Elliot Luther was among a record Comerica Park crowd of nearly 45,000 to see the Bengals take a two-games-to-one lead in the best-of-five American League Division Series. most intense I've seen a Tiger game in all my life. I got picked up during lunch, and I'm just like, see him. I'm going to the game. Ashley Williams had similar sentiments. All you heard was, let's go Tigers and eat it up Tigers, and we got hot. Like, it was great. It was a great experience. Game for us this evening in the District of Detroit with coverage from Dan Dickerson and Bobby Scales at 540 p.m. on 99-7-1450 WHTC. Kalamazoo Wings defenseman Joey Ratz is returning to the sport he loves after treatment for testicular cancer. Rance was diagnosed in May of 22 after he finished his last professional season in the United Kingdom. He was declared cancer-free this past June. I had a few different uh, forms of tumors spread throughout my body. It uh, went to my lungs, out had a football-sized tumor on my neck. Um, I wasn't given that much longer to live. Rats played collegiately at Arizona State. It, it means the world to me. It's uh, the, the, the fans, the culture, the guys in the locker room. It's honestly the best, the best uh, sport that I, that I can name. The K-Wings have a preseason encounter with East Coast Hockey League rival Toledo tomorrow at Wing Stadium and open its regular campaign next Saturday against the Walleye in Toledo. Six Tigers pitchers teamed on a six-hit, six-strikeout shutout as A.J. Hinch's Bengals blank visiting Cleveland in baseball's postseason yesterday, 3 nothing. Strike throwing is key. Being at your best from pitch one, you know, you see the velocity up, you see the, the execution of 
uh, of big pitches to, to get the first batter out. Our inherited runners is really good. Um, and, and our guys understand that they're, they're put in that position because every single person wearing the English D knows they can get the job done and they continue to respond. Detroit leads to best of five American League Division Series, two games to one, as it hosts Game 4 at Comerica Park tonight with coverage from Dan Dickerson and Bobby Scales at 5.40 p.m. on 99.7.1450 WHTC. Derek Lalonde's Red Wings begin a new season this evening by hosting the Pittsburgh Penguins at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. We have done a really good job here of staying in the moment. Um, If you start talking to be where we were at the end of last year, talking outcome, that never works that way. You get lost in what you're doing daily. Our only focus since our last exhibition game was our opening night. So we want to concentrate on that. We want to perform the right way. We want to try to build... And this is our first opportunity. Get the latest news anytime at whdc.com.